Morning Trainiacs. We have something very exciting. Today, we are upgrading from Zwift setup with this. This is seriously what I've used. The old iPhone 5 SE to the Apple TV 4K. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through how to set up Zwift on the Apple TV 4K and then I'm gonna give you some of the impressions of the quality difference between this for in between one and two hundred dollars and this free if you've already got it but fairly costly if you don't have it. I'm looking forward to this. Alright, so the reason that I chose the Apple TV 4K for the Zwift setup is because after doing some research on what the best bang for your buck Zwift setup is, came down to this versus a full gaming setup. Now, these are the two options that get you the very best quality Zwift experience as far as how good the graphics are, how smooth the experience is, how easy it is to feel like you're immersed in the game. And sure, there are quality differences between the Apple TV 4K and a full gaming setup, but a full gaming setup might cost anywhere between $1,000 and $2,000. This is less than $200. So let's get into it. All right, so setup is pretty simple. Basically, you just unbox the few things that come in the box. So in the box, you've got an Apple TV 4K brick, you've got the cable, and you've got the remote. Everything comes charged, ready to go out of the box. You have to take all the wrapping off, then you have to plug in the Apple TV 4K to the power source, and then there isn't an HDMI cable, so you've got to make sure that you have an HDMI cable that you plug into the TV. And there is an optional direct line where you can directly hook up a wired internet connection into the Apple TV 4K. But in my case, I'm just doing it off of the internet Wi-Fi. So then it's going to take you through all the prompts to set up the Apple TV 4K. Fairly simple, you can just select to do it through your phone, bring the phone close to the Apple TV 4K and just follow the prompts. Once you do that and you're logged in to the Apple TV, turn on the TV and go to the Apple Store and search for Zwift. And one of the cool things about the new Apple TV 4K is, is that you can now just say Zwift. Zwift. And then it will spell Swift, but it'll still find Zwift. Now once you end up getting Zwift on, open the app, you'll have to log into your account, and then what you'll have to do is pair all of your devices to the Apple TV 4K. The issue with that is that the Apple TV only allows three connections to the device. So one is taken up by the remote, another has to be taken up by your smart trainer, so that leaves you to choose between heart rate monitor and a cadence sensor. But we want all of them. So what you can actually do is you can use the Zwift companion app to do all of the pairing. So what you can do is, as you start setting up all of the devices, it'll prompt you when you select the third device, like the cadence or the heart rate monitor, and it'll say, do you want to use Zwift Companion to do the Bluetooth pairing? In which case you say yes, you go to your phone, you open the Zwift Companion app, you click in the bottom right where more is, click settings, click device connection, and then make sure that that toggle switch is toggled on. Now, if you're like me and you've got devices all around the place, might have a hard time selecting which ones to connect. 
So you're just going to have to go back and forth a little bit trying to disconnect and reconnect and you do that on the Apple TV with the remote. And eventually I had to switch from run and disconnect my stride foot pod so that it would recognize the trainer as the power source. And if you do that, you're done. It's all connected and you are in the game and uh, I get it. This is nice. Let me go through this ride and then I'll show you some sample footage. So that's uh, about two hours done at a little faster than Ironman pace. That hurt, that hurt. Now, when I first started using this, the connection with the cadence sensor, it wasn't really working. It was only reading about 35 cadence. The Wahoo kicker also wasn't being controlled. The climb wasn't being controlled by the kicker. But all I needed to do was go into the Wahoo Fitness app, refresh all of those connections, and that got everything sorted. And then came back and all good again. But uh, there is a significant difference in quality between this and the iPhone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some footage of me running. We're gonna put them side by side and I'm gonna show you the difference in quality the experiences it's significantly better. I need some food. Oh. So, all right, Trainiacs, I've got a little bit of footage here for us to take a look at. Comparing two of the more common ways to get Zwift on a TV. Now, of course you can do an iPad, but I'm not a big fan of that because you get bars on the side, but the orientation of an iPhone is the same as most of the TVs out there. So that's how you get the most screen real estate on a TV. Now, one of the issues with using your phone is that when you have a AirPlay connection and you've just connected the phone to the TV via AirPlay, you end up getting a lot of skipping depending on the reliability of the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth connection. Now, you can, to improve that, get a lightning to HDMI adapter. That ends up then draining a lot of the battery and if you don't have a spare phone then you are using up your phone whereas with apple tv costs 100 to 200 dollars depending on which one you get and as i'll show you the quality is a lot better and you still get all that screen real estate so let's go right back to the beginning of this footage here and i tried to ride basically the same course at about the same effort in new york on the left we've got the iphone on the right we've got the apple tv what you see is that the detail in the trees, the leaves, is significantly better on the Apple TV. So take a look at the trees, and I recognize that this is a recording of a recording, but it gives you kind of the general impression. Like here you know it's a tree, but there you can see all the individual leaves. You can also take a look at the road as we're passing by here. Here you know it's a road, but there isn't the same texture and like depth that you've got with the Apple TV. Also, this is a really good example. As you come up to things like barriers and things like this, uh, archways, you can see like the, the shape of it, but let's take a look at it in full view with the Apple TV. And what you can see is that there's just a ton more depth. There's like little bits of texture. You've almost got like a feeling of, well, I guess texture and depth. Um, running out of words to say, apparently. Not good at the sourcing. Now also take a look at the edges of the rider. So we'll give you a really good example here. And you can see the edges of all the riders around me very, very crisp. 
and defined, but now go at it the other way on the iPhone and you see that everything's just a little bit pixelated. So it's not as crisp, it's not as sharp. Now, I want you to look here specifically at the flag. So take a look at the flag as we come up to it here. Now you're probably not gonna see a whole lot of texture or definition. You're gonna know that it's a flag and that's about it. But if we can find a spot, basically perfect timing, where we've got a flag coming up with the Apple TV, what you should see is that there's little bits of rippling and, and waves. There you go. So you can see just that little bit of rippling, little bit of waves. It helps give you a sense that you are actually in the game. Now, obviously the color is going to be a fair bit richer when you use the Apple TV 4K because what it is, is it's a 4K image that's scaled down to 1080p HD. That's actually what we do with these videos. We shoot them in 4K, scale it down to 1080p because that gives you a really rich color if you don't have smudges on the lens. And one of the things that you have to know about that 4K scaling down to 1080 is that it doesn't quite scale perfectly. You do lose a little bit of real estate on the edges, like and the things that it'll make a difference on is you might lose a cadence number when you go over 100. So I was losing the one and I would just see like 04 if my cadence was high. Whereas with an iPhone, it's not as rich. I mean, it's a great quality screen, but when you take that image and you blow it up from something this size to something this size, you're gonna lose a heck of a lot of detail. Whereas with the Apple TV 4K, it's actually going the other way. And of course, latency. You don't have to worry about all the dongles and everything to get this to work without skipping. With the Apple TV 4K, it's going to be instant and you're not gonna have any skipping whatsoever. Now there's one other spot that I wanna show you here that gives you a really good example of the texture and the depth. I wanna show you this right here. Take a look at this pillar that's coming up on the left. You know that it's a pillar. You kind of have a good sense of the shape of it, sort of square. But when we take a look at that with the Apple TV 4K, let's see if we can speed that up. You're gonna see that there's a heck of a lot of depth and richness and fine little details in there that you don't get on the iPhone. Oh, I like that. So that's the differences between using an iPhone just via AirPlay to get Zwift on your TV and just using an Apple TV 4K. Significantly different for only I'm on bestbuy.com, 180 to $200, which is far, far less than the one to $2,000 that you could spend on a gaming computer. That's the next level up beyond the Apple TV 4K. What you'll get with a gaming computer is a little bit of shadows and just a little bit more richness. But in a lot of the videos that I saw, it wasn't really that significantly different. And for the five to 10 times different price tag, I went with the Apple TV 4K and I don't know, I'm pretty into it. So that's it Trainiacs. If you aren't already following me on Zwift, go follow me there. It's gonna be Zwift season. Once they come out with the team riding function, the private function that we're gonna reserve for Team Trainiac, we are gonna be doing some group rides there. So you can follow me. First name is T, last name is Riathlon Tarrant. So I show up as Triathlon Tarrant. But if you search Riathlon space Tarrant as the last name, I think I should pop up. Go follow me there. Improve your Zwift setup because it's Zwift season, Trainiacs.